All right, welcome back to week 11, unit 11 for English 2. This is your second lecture for the unit. In the first, in the first lecture, we looked at uh, grammar and uh, we looked at uh, experiences. Uh, the grammar we looked at was the present perfect. Okay, And for the experiences, we looked at events or things you did uh, at some time in the past. Okay. We're going to get back to that grammar uh, later. We're going to be working on our, uh, our past simple tense for a moment. Uh, this is a good review because often when you talk about your experiences, you do use the present simple. Uh, as well as the present perfect, okay? And we can see that in this activity here on page 85, okay? So it says here, the speaking task one, Terry has been all over the world. Okay, so notice the use here. All right, so he has traveled all over the world. Okay, so many times in the past. This is a, maybe many experiences for Terry. Uh, match the country names with the famous landmarks, okay? So uh, that's the first thing you're going to do here. So then take turns asking about his travel experiences. And ask follow-up questions, okay? So here it says, take turns asking about his experiences. Uh, one example sentence would be, have you ever been to Switzerland? And apparently Terry says, Yes, I have. What did you do? I went skiing. Okay, so that's a follow-up question right here. Notice the difference in the tense. Okay. Have you ever been? Okay. Have you ever traveled to Switzerland? Have you ever gone to Switzerland? Or as what native speakers like to say, have you ever been to Switzerland? Okay. So yes, I have. I have. Uh, traveled to Switzerland. I have gone. I have been to Switzerland. What did you do? What did you do there? Where? Here in Switzerland. So what did you do in Switzerland? I went skiing. So notice in the opening, okay, they're asking about an experience. Okay, it's an experience he's had. So now they talk about that time. Okay, that time he went to Switzerland. Okay. When you were in Switzerland, when you traveled to Switzerland, when you visited Switzerland, what did you do? Okay. So we have a specific time. So what did you do in Switzerland? And so the answers are in the past tense. So the verb go skiing, the activity, uh, go skiing. Uh, I went skiing. Okay. That's what I did. That's what I did in Switzerland. Okay, so you see all of that. Uh, we're going to try it here. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to write the country name for each of these objects, okay? So the Matterhorn we know is in Switzerland. There's the Sydney Opera House, the Taj Mahal, okay? Uh, there's uh, the Sugarloaf and uh, the Sacred Jesus Statue in Rio, oops, and there's the Sagrada Familia, and the Mali Jiang Song, the Great Wall of China. Oops. All right. Now, what you got to do is match those six places, uh, or I guess five, with the uh, with the countries down here. Okay. We already know Switzerland matches with the Matterhorn. Okay. Which country matches with the Sydney Opera House? Well, you've got five choices at the bottom. So match the countries in here. When you're done, as it says in the instructions, one person will ask about these experiences. Have you ever been to these countries? Okay. The follow-up country, or follow-up question. What did you do? When did you go? Okay. I went skiing. I went last year. Okay. So those are some examples there. Try this on your own or with a partner. Take turns and we will review when you are finished. Okay. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's a bit of a substitution drill. 
but I can't stress this enough. This is a very common um, series of turns when we are talking about experiences, right? Okay. Now I think you probably know the different uh, countries. This would be Australia. The Taj Mahal is in India. Okay. Uh, the Jesus statue and the sugar loaf are in Rio. That's in the country of Brazil. Sagrada Familia is in Spain, the city of Barcelona. And of course, the Mali Jiang Song, Song that is China. Okay, covers most of it. Okay. Now for the language, I think we know this. Okay. So the second one, have you ever been to Australia? Yes, I have. When did you go? I went last year. Okay, so in the question, you would have the auxiliary verb in the past tense. The verb remains the same. So when did you go? Okay. But this one would change to the past tense of go. So went. So did, do. Okay. Uh, so when did you go? I went last year. Look at the next one. Have you ever been to India? Yes, I have. What did you enjoy the most? Or what did you enjoy most? Okay. The verb, enjoy. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing the Taj Mahal. Right. So when you went to India, you enjoyed the Taj Mahal. Next. Have you been to Brazil? Yes, I have. Who did you travel with? I traveled with my friend. Okay. Have you ever been to Spain? Yes, I have. Where did you stay? I stayed in hostels. Okay. Something like a minbar. Uh, what's next? Have you ever been to China? Yes, I have. Why did you go there? Why did you go to China? I wanted to walk on the Great Wall. Okay. Good. So for these answers, again, pretty easy, and it doesn't really cover the grammar. I guess it's the grammar we're studying today. But again, often we ask a first question like this to get to allow us to ask lots of past tense questions. So often you'll see people having conversations. They open or they begin with this general question: Have you ever? Okay. Have you ever? Suisse Gabaseo, Gabon Jogisa, okay, and they would answer that, and then all the other questions are in the past tense, following up. So a very similar style in Korean, okay. And in this question, they only in this activity, you're only answering, uh, you're only answering one, you're only asking one question. Uh, on the next page, on page, I'm trying to get this. On page 86, you're going to do, you're going to ask many questions. Okay, so you can see in the example here. Have you ever won a medal? The person says, Yes, I have. What medal did you win? How old were you when you won it? Okay, so those are a lot of follow-up questions, and you can see them listed right here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do this activity. We're going to talk about these subjects. Before we do that, we're going to look to the uh, next page, 87. We're going to focus on some grammar. This is kind of a review. I assume many of you have not uh, studied or have studied this in the past. Okay. Notice my uh, use of the past participle 
studied. I think you have studied this. I don't know when, maybe in middle school, maybe in high school. But sometime in the past, you studied this. Okay? You have studied this uh, grammar in the past. Okay? So what you're going to do, it says write the infinitive form for each past participle. So this is a straight up grammar activity. Okay? So I give you the verb, uh, the past participle made, okay? and you have to write the basic verb. Okay? Good. Go to this next one, eaten. With eaten, what's the pat? What's the infinitive form? Infinitive form is eat. Okay, you can write the basic verb, the infinitive form, each one. So make, eat, see, go. You can write these all down. And you're finished. We're going to do a quick review just to see how smart you are. Okay. All right. Uh, do that, and we and pause the activity, and then we will continue with the lecture when you are finished. Okay, let's review the activity, okay? Now most of these I think you know. Uh, the past participle, or the, the infinitive for eaten, eat. Seen, see. Gone, go. Tried, Try. Driven. Drive. Bought. Buy. Traveled. Travel. Taken. Take. Done. Do. Left. Leave. Won. Win. Given. Give. Okay. At the bottom here, uh, I think we know this one. Uh, have is the infinitive for had, okay, uh, which may sound a bit unusual when you use it with the uh, auxiliary verb in the present perfect. Have you ever had? Yes, I have had. So you have to use, it sounds like you're saying the word twice. Flown. What's the infinitive form of flown? Okay, so you might hear it in a sentence. Have you ever flown? To Jeju? Have you ever flown to another country? Okay, I'll give you a hint. The infinitive form is not flow. Okay, uh, the, in, <laughs> the uh, uh, past participle of flow is flowed. But what word has a past participle flown? We'll come back to that. Ridden? Ride. Okay, we'll see that today. Met? Meet. Have you ever met? Uh, the past particle swum. The verb is swim. Many native speakers do not use this word, at least not in my experience. Okay? I usually say swam. Have you ever swam? Ever swam in a public pool? Okay. So uh, swum sounds very unusual to me, but that's the correct grammar. Okay? So you're not wrong if you use it. And the past, uh, sorry, the infinitive form of lived is live. And the answer for, are you right? All correct. Now, the infinitive form of flow, it's difficult to say. Infinitive form of flown is fly. Correct. <laughs> I'm not sure if you see it. F L Y. Okay. So if you fly in an airplane every day, then if somebody asks you, uh, have you ever flown? The answer is definitely yes. Okay, these are all correct as well. Um, not sure why we don't get feedback for all of them. Okay. But again, I can't say it enough. This is a good way to practice for your uh, quiz. Okay, so we did that. Now, uh, the activity we're going to do here is a combination of these last two activities. You're going to create sentences. Uh, you're going to ask questions, okay, asking about these experiences in number one, okay? So the first thing you got to do is figure out what's the question. Have you ever, have you ever done any of these things, okay? So uh, the verbs are listed here. The objects are also listed. Um, 
I'm going to uh, let you ask those questions okay, to your partner, and your partner can answer. Okay? If you're practicing alone, uh, you can ask the questions, and then you can maybe think of some other follow-up questions. Uh, I can't uh, impress this upon you enough. This is a very good uh, conversation skill. Okay, because you're opening with a first question. Okay, you're opening with the first question, and then uh, you're following up with other questions. Okay, look at the example here. Have you ever won a medal? Okay, so the verb would be win a medal. Have you ever won a medal? Yes, I have. What medal did you win? How old were you when you won it? Okay, where did you win the medal? Okay. Uh, who were you with when you won the medal? Okay. Or who saw you win the medal? Who helped you win the medal? Okay. Um, good. So there might be other questions you can ask with these interrogatives, these WH questions. Okay. So the first question, create a question with these actions, and then you can think of some follow-up questions. Okay. I'll pause it here and then we will review that. All right, let's check out the questions here. Okay. So again, you're making a question from these actions. Stay up all night, meet someone famous, live in a foreign country, eat Vietnamese food, own a pet, break a bone. Uh, I'm gonna see all of these. Uh, break a bone, okay. Uh, lose something expensive, upload a video to the internet, see a big concert, and cut your own hair. <laughs> okay, there might be many people these days cutting their own hair. Okay, so if you ask this question about their experiences, about this experience, you might get a lot of positive answers. Okay, so the first one. Have you ever stayed up all night? Okay, so the verb, stayed. The past participle of stay, stayed. It's a regular verb. Next one. Have you ever met someone famous? Next one. Have you ever lived in a foreign country? Okay, it's a regular verb. Next one. Have you ever eaten Vietnamese food. Okay, if you're from Vietnam, okay, maybe you have eaten a lot of Vietnamese food, or if you're a Korean, maybe you've eaten, you have eaten a lot of Vietnamese food. Have you ever owned a pet? Have you ever had a pet? Okay. Next one. Have you ever broken a bone? Uh, next, have you ever lost something expensive? Okay. So this is an irregular verb. The past participle is the same as the past tense. It's also very common. Next one, have you ever uploaded a video to the internet? Have you ever uploaded? Okay, it's a regular verb. Next one, have you ever seen a big concert? Have you ever gone to a big concert? Have you ever attended a big concert? Have you ever seen a big concert? It's an irregular verb. And the next one, cut your own hair. Have you ever cut your own hair? So we talked about this. Cut is a verb that has the same form, uh, present simple, past simple, and past perfect, or present perfect. Sorry. All right. So for each of these questions you ask, your you can ask your partner a follow-up question. Have you ever met someone famous? Yes, I have. Who did you meet? Okay. I met Kang Dong-hoon. Okay. Uh, where did you meet him? Okay. What was he doing? 
Uh, how old were you when you met him? Okay, so many follow-up questions. Okay. Um, right. Have you ever eaten Vietnamese food? Yes, I have. Okay. What did you eat? Okay. I had salguksu. Where did you eat it? I ate it in Da Nang, the beautiful city of Da Nang. So there might be a lot of follow-up questions, but the follow-up questions are in the past tense. Okay, past. What medal did you win? Okay, so you see the past tense written right here. Okay, uh, that's something you can do on your own. I'm not going to review each of your answers here, but please understand, as I said again, this is an excellent way to have a conversation. Ask about their experiences, if it's an experience they have had, or maybe they haven't. If the answer is yes, you can ask these follow-up questions. I think we call them follow-up questions right here. Okay, good. Uh, let's move on to page 87. All right, on page 87, we are going to uh, read over a piece of writing that was uh, written by Mehua. Okay. And uh, she's talking about her uh, upcoming audition for a music school. Okay. So we can find out about that she wants to join a music school. Okay. Now in the writing, okay, in the writing, we can find out that she is talking about um, this audition that she's trying to uh, become a member of the university she's applying to join the university okay so you're going to read through this and you're going to find out any mistakes in the underlined portions okay so in the underlined portions you can see uh, there are some mistakes. Not all of them are mistakes. Some of these underlined portions are, some of these underlined words or phrases, some are correct, okay? But some have mistakes. So read through the dialogue, see if you understand which ones have mistakes. I'll give you a hint. There are 10 underlined uh, phrases or underlined words uh, seven are incorrect okay the other three are okay but seven are, have mistakes read through it make the corrections find the errors and make the corrections I will review this with you in uh, a moment so press pause read the activity and then we'll review <clears throat> All right, let's check these out. Uh, as I said, there were 10 underlined phrases. Uh, seven of them were incorrect. Uh, and three of them are okay. okay. Uh, one of them we can see right away. I'm excited, but I have never been more nervous. Right, so at no point in the past uh, have I, would you describe me as more nervous than now? Okay. Now the first one, there's, or sorry, the second one, there's an error. I applied to the university two months ago. Okay, so we know this is incorrect. The time is specified, but the as the past, as a point in the past, so the verb must be in the past tense. So we'll change that Y to an I, add an ED. I applied to the university two months ago. Looks good. Two. Last Friday, they have invited me for an addition okay now again um, we know this is the present simple because they give a specific time in the past last Friday she could have said they have invited me for an addition when well last Friday okay, but she gave the information right away so they invited me for an addition good three I searched the university website for information about additions before applying. 
Okay, so we're talking about um, she's talking about a specific search in a specific university. So it could be one time in the past. On its own, it's grammatically correct. But from the context, um, we know she's talking about one audition. Okay, so I search. Should be I searched. Also in the sentence, uh, there's specific, they give you a, not really a point, but a, ref, uh, a relative point. Four, I have known right away about my music arrangement. Okay, she was talking about um, when I saw the time limit. So she does give a specific time. She doesn't say how many days ago or, or when it was, uh, but specifically when I saw the time limit. It was a very specific time in the past. So we need the past tense. So have known, incorrect. We're not going to use the present perfect. We're going to use the uh, past simple. Good. Five. I have bought already my plane ticket to London. Okay. Right. So it looks like she's chosen the right grammar. Okay, so she doesn't give a specific time in the past. Just it's a it's an activity that has already been completed. So we're talking about a completed activity. The time that she did it is not so important. It's just important that she has done it. Okay, I don't care when. I just care yes or no. Did you uh, buy the ticket? Yes, I did. I have already bought it. Nobody cares when. Okay. Uh, the problem is this adverb should go before. Okay. So I don't even know if that's grammatically correct, but that's how everybody talks. Okay. So I don't know if it seems to me the, uh, uh, the auxiliary verb and the verb should go together. Um, but this is how we would phrase it. I have already bought my plane ticket some point or I have bought my plane ticket to London already so it's an ad it's an adverb you could put it um, or an adverb uh, time you could put it at the end if you want six I yet have not reserved my hotel room so same thing or again we're, we're not concerned about when she did it just uh, was it sometime in the past yes or no okay uh, she chose the right form, but the structure is wrong. Yet, I have not yet reserved. Okay, So the negative and uh, the adverb would come in just before the verb. Correct? Good. I never have performed abroad. Again, we have the same problem. The, 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 ver the tense is correct. Okay? She doesn't give a specific time. Uh, and so we're going to use the present Perfect. Okay. So the words are out of order. I ha never have performed. I have never performed. So that never would go in between the auxiliary verb and then the past participle. So I've never performed abroad. Good. Perfect. Okay. So we can check those mistakes. Okay. And if that was difficult, you can do it again. Uh, you can use the reference on page 85 to help you with that okay all right let's go to the last page and we'll quickly do that okay on page 86 we did this speaking activity here in which we were looking at um, starting a conversation with an experience have you ever and then adding these extra questions okay right ones right here who what where when why how okay you're just asking extra questions. So we did that on our own. And I can't say it enough. That's good practice for the next activity. Okay. So, so on page 88, we're going to do this activity here. Uh, much the same thing. Uh, we're going to find out about the people in your class. Now, I'm assuming uh, it's maybe just a few of you. Maybe you already know 
This is a good game to play with strangers, uh, but we're going to do it um, uh, with a partner or by yourself. Okay? First thing you're going to do, as we did on page 86, you're going to ask these questions. Have you ever? Have you ever? Okay. Notice some of these verbs uh, will take a, um, a regular form, just an ed ending. Okay. Join a club. Okay. That's an action maybe you experienced, you have experienced in the past. So have you ever joined a club? Okay. Maybe the action is have a part-time job. Have you ever had a part-time job? So again, this verb would be irregular. Okay. So you're just going to ask the question there. If you can ask a follow-up question, great. Okay. If you're if you're studying by yourself, think of a follow-up question. Okay. Uh, so go through these and. See if you can form the sentences. All right, let's do a quick review. Okay, so all of these questions begin with a with a um, have you ever? So number one, have you ever gone fishing? No, I haven't. Okay. Have you ever seen a horror film? Have you ever seen a horror film? Yes, I have. What horror film did you see? Okay. I saw Psycho. Number three, have you ever met someone famous? Yes, I have. Okay. Who did you meet? Okay. I met John Dickinson. Okay. Good. Let's go down to number four. Number four, have you ever been in a car accident? Okay, so the verb is be. Ever been in a car accident? No, I haven't. Or yes, I have. Were you hurt? Okay, that's a yes or no question, but you could follow up. Number five, have you ever given to a charity? Yes, I have. What charity did you give to? I gave money to UNICEF. It's a charity, right? UNICEF, Red Cross, something like that. Number six, have you ever sung karaoke? <laughs> have you ever sung karaoke? Okay. Uh, yes, I have. Okay. How many songs did you sing? I sang one song. I hate karaoke. Okay. Notice my pronunciation, karaoke. That's maybe a more, uh, many English speakers pronounce it karaoke. Why? I don't know. Number seven, have you ever ridden a jet ski? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Okay. Where did you ride a jet ski? I rode a jet ski in... Bali. Number eight. Hmm? Number eight. Have you ever played on a sports team? Okay, so the verb is play. Ever played on a sports team? Yes, I have. Okay. What sport did you play? I played soccer. And finally, the verb is give. Have you ever given a speech? Number 10, have you ever cooked dinner? Okay. So we have one regular verb, one irregular verb. Cooked and given. <laughs> have you ever given a speech? Yes, I have. How did you feel? I felt nervous. Okay. What did you cook? I cooked bokumbap. Good. All right, that concludes today's lesson. Uh, I'll see you next week for week 12. Unit 12.